Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you are someone who has high blood pressure, been recently diagnosed with high blood pressure, or maybe you're just trying to prevent your blood pressure from going too high, then today's video is for you because I have spent a lot of time discussing high blood pressure, but today we will finally talk about diet and what to eat to manage your blood pressure. Now, the main focus will be known as the DASH diet. And the reason I like this diet is because it's more of an approach to eating rather than a specific diet. In all honesty, I'm not the biggest fan of diets because they are obviously by nature quite restricting, which in the long run isn't quite sustainable. And I especially don't like diets that remove a food group entirely because then you start to become at risk of nutrient deficiencies. Now, this isn't always the case. And of course, some people can be quite successful with certain diets, but having a healthy and sustainable approach to eating is going to mean you can do it for longer and be better for your mental health as well, because you will have a bit more freedom and flexibility. And that is playing the long game. So let's get into it. diet stands for dietary approaches to manage hypertension and as the name suggests it's a plan to help prevent and manage high blood pressure the good thing about the dash diet is that it's clinically recognized which means that there is a general acceptance by health professionals that this is the best approach to eating if you're trying to manage high blood pressure and the reason for this is because it is evidence-based there is solid research out there to back all of this up. Now, the principles of this diet are actually quite simple. They focus on food groups and nutrients that are known to benefit heart health. What that means is that the end result of following this approach will be less intake of sodium, more intake of potassium, calcium and magnesium. So before we go any further, I want to explain the reasons behind reducing sodium and increasing other nutrients. So let's start with sodium. The first thing that anyone with high blood pressure will be told to do is try to reduce salt intake. And that is because excessive sodium consumption is linked to an increased risk of high blood pressure. Why? Because if you have high sodium levels in your blood, this will actually lead to water retention. Sodium has a water attracting effect. It's kind of like a magnet for water. So if you have too much in your blood, then water will actually get drawn out from places like your organs. And this water has now moved into your blood vessel. This puts more pressure on the walls of the vessels, which will increase blood pressure. So that's why sodium or salt has to be the first thing you try to reduce if your blood pressure is going too high, because it plays a key role in the issue. Now, potassium tends to counter the effect of sodium in the body. It can help to reduce blood pressure because it causes blood vessels to widen which reduces their pressure. It can also prevent your arteries from becoming too stiff. Now, the most important thing with potassium though is that it needs to be in balance with the amount of sodium. So too much potassium is also a bad thing. It's not something you wanna go and try and consume as much as you can of. Calcium is needed for your heart muscles to contract, which essentially means you need calcium if you want your heart to beat. And so the DASH diet aims to make sure you are getting enough calcium so that your heart can beat efficiently. Because if your heart is struggling to pump blood, your blood pressure will increase in an effort to compensate, which we do not want. Calcium is also great for bone health. So the DASH diet also aims to consider overall health, not just your heart. Now, finally, magnesium also can help reduce blood pressure by widening those blood vessels. And just like calcium, it's involved with heart muscle contraction too and making sure your heart is able to beat. Click here if you missed my video on magnesium, but that video covers all the benefits of magnesium and why you would want to include it in your diet. So that's just an explanation of why the DASH diet aims to get these specific nutrients into the diet. But let's move on to the actual principles of the diet itself. What exactly does it want you to do? Now, as I said before, it focuses on food groups and the main principles are to eat plenty of vegetables, fruits and whole grains, have fat free or low fat dairy products, limit foods that are high in saturated fat such as fatty meats, full fat dairy products and tropical oils like coconut oil, 
limit sugary drinks and also sweets. What the DASH diet actually does though is provide to you the amount of serves from each food group that you should be having. Now, these numbers will depend on the amount of calories that you actually need to consume in a day. And this is why I like the DASH diet because there is no one size fits all. Everyone will have different needs in terms of how many calories to eat in a day and this caters to that. So I've just made a table here of the food groups and the recommended serves depending on a few different calorie ranges. Now you can pause and have a look and make note of the ones relevant to yourself if you'd like to. A lot of standard diets assume a 2000 calorie a day intake for the average adult. So if you are after generic numbers, you can look at this column. Now I do want to point out that the daily sodium limit on all of these is 2300 milligrams. But the DASH diet recommends dropping this to 1,500 milligrams if you are already diagnosed with hypertension, diabetes, or chronic kidney disease because you want more aggressive reduction. Now, 1,500 milligrams daily limit of sodium has much better reductions to blood pressure. So if you can do that, then that's a good goal to have. So as you can see from the main principles of the diet, we are trying to reduce processed foods, refined carbs, and saturated fats, which I think is just a good approach for anyone to have when it comes to eating food, as these can contribute to quite a few chronic health issues. But I do know this is much easier said than done. Now there's a couple issues with the DASH diet that we do need to address. The first is that this approach requires you to plan your own meals and pick what you eat based off the recommendations of serve numbers for each of the food groups. So it's up to you to put this into action in a way. Now, that is not an easy thing to do, especially if you are someone who is not used to meal planning or if you don't have too much nutrition knowledge. The best way to approach this is probably to get some help from a professional, like a nutritionist or a dietitian. They will be able to get you started and offer some guidance. Now, the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute website actually has quite a few resources for people to help with this issue as well. So I've put a link in the description to these, but the one that I think by far is the most useful is this resource here that actually tells you what types of foods belong to each food group because this isn't always common knowledge and it's a good place to start with when you're planning out your eating. Now, the other issue that I see some people running into is trying to figure out what actually counts as one serve. There aren't too many resources on the site about serving sizes, so I just made this table to give some examples of serving sizes for the foods found in each of the food groups. My thinking is that you need to know what food belongs to each group, but then you also need to know what counts as one serve in order to be able to follow the DASH plan correctly. So if you have any questions about it, leave a comment or even send a message to the Instagram or Facebook pages. Links to those are also in the description. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is why this diet is recommended. If you're familiar with the Mediterranean diet, you will actually notice a lot of similarities between the Mediterranean diet and what the DASH diet encourages you to eat, which makes sense because there is extensive research to show that the Mediterranean diet is effective in reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease and overall mortality. If you want a diet that is heart healthy, most places will point you to the Mediterranean diet as well. Now the DASH diet came from an eight week trial that got participants to eat either a DASH diet, a fruit and vegetable rich diet, or just the standard American diet, which has more fat and cholesterol and much less nutrients like potassium and magnesium. And surprise, surprise, the results found that the people on the DASH diet had significant improvements to blood pressure and cholesterol levels and also had uh, better weight loss effects too. Since then, much more research has been done using the DASH diet and what the results say is that it can reduce systolic blood pressure, so the top number, by 6 to 11 millimeters of mercury. And this is good because even just a 5 millimeter of mercury reduction in systolic blood pressure can reduce the risk of major cardiac events like a heart attack. And if you reduce it by 10, that reduces the risk by 20%. And this would all be just from changing the way that you eat. It's not including any changes to exercise. It's not with medications either. You can achieve this just from making some changes to the way that you eat. And if you combine that with some exercise, 
even more benefit. So we aren't too far into 2024 and it's a great time to start playing the long game. The DASH diet is something that you can try to implement slowly and make small changes towards and just try to maintain. Your blood pressure and your heart in general could thank you for it. Now, if you are someone that has a few existing health conditions already, just make sure that the diet is appropriate for you and check with your doctor first. That's all I have to say for now. I will see you next week and until then, Keep playing the long game.